Hey everybody, so let's take a quick look at polygon counts and polygon reduction in Houdini. Just drop down a sphere here, dive inside, and note that when you pull down a sphere from the shelf, it immediately comes in as a polygon mesh. However, if you create a sphere using the tab menu, it will come in as a primitive. So if you do that, you're going to want to change it manually to a polygon mesh, typically. Now, it's very easy to create a lot of polygons in Houdini, and Houdini can handle it, but then when you load uh, something you've made that has a lot of polygons into another piece of software like Max, one, it's going to take a long time to load because it's a large file, and two, if it has a lot of polygons in it, and if you're loading multiple objects that have a lot of polygons in them, you'll notice that the software will begin to bog down and lose frame rate and even become hard to work with. So what we want to do is make sure that when we export models from Houdini, they have a manageable number of polygons. So let's do a scatter and we'll create another sphere and a copy to points. And this creates a whole bunch of spheres around our original sphere. We can merge our original sphere back in and see this sort of studded sphere result. And if I right-click a node, it gives me a report of how many polygons are used to create this whole shape. And we see this is under 300,000 polygons. That's pretty good. But if we go into this sphere that we're replicating a thousand times over the surface of the larger sphere, and let's say we were to crank up the rows and columns to 50, which makes each of our individual spheres nice and smooth, right? You can see they have a, a lot of definition now. But look what that does to our polygon count. That takes us up to 2,450,000 polygons. That's way too many. And because these spheres are small on the surface of our larger sphere, we probably don't need them to be so finely grained in detail. If I take these back down to, let's say, 20 by 20, they're still going to be quite smooth. But look at what happens to our polygon count. Our polygon count is back to 380,000. So just going from 50 by 50 down to 20 by 20 saves us over 2 million polygons. And that's a huge, huge difference. So even if we want to take our base sphere up and make it very fine-grained, even 100 by 100, our polygon count is still only 389,000. Why? Because there's only one copy of this highly detailed sphere, whereas there's a thousand copies of this smaller sphere. So if you want to be even more economical, there's a great node that's just called PolyReduce. There it is, PolyReduce. And PolyReduce allows you to specify a percentage of polygons you want to keep. So let's zoom in on this and see what this polyreduce does. I'm going to say I only want to keep 50% of my polygons. And it will process the shape. And will maintain as much as possible the smoothness and the detail while reducing the number of polygons. Let's see how many I have here. I'm down to 194,000 polygons as opposed to 389. So it successfully reduced my polygon count by 50% without really sacrificing any detail. So that's another way to reduce polygons. And if you want to reduce even further, see if we go inside here, we see 
the inner part of all of these spheres, right, is inside. Here's the outside of this sphere. Here's the inside of this sphere, right? Half of these spheres is actually never going to be seen because it's inside the larger sphere. So the way to get rid of that is instead of using a merge here, we can take out this merge and we can use a Boolean instead. And this Boolean is going to take some time to process. And we want to put this Boolean into the union mode, where it's going to calculate the union of our main sphere and all of our subspheres. So now, when we go inside, instead of there being spheres protruding into the inside of our shape, we've created a completely hollow shape where only the polygons necessary for the protruding spheres are there. So the internal sphere halves that were hidden before have been removed by the Boolean node. So now we see we're down to 224 polygons to represent this whole shape. With our poly reduce, we're down to 112,000 polygons. And that's really, really efficient. The only other thing you want to add here is that any time you use a Boolean, you want to put in a poly doctor because the Boolean node will create some bad polygon edges that won't look bad in Houdini, but they will look bad when you import them into another piece of software like Max. So we include the poly doctor. It's got to think about this for a minute. And it's actually going to add some polygons back in, but those are necessary polygons to sort of correct the errors made by the Boolean node. So after the poly doctor, we're back up to 287,000 polygons, but of course our poly reduce is going to take us down to 143 polygons. That's a far cry from the over 2 million polygons that we had when we used a high resolution on this sphere. So those are just some tips for reducing polygon count. 143,000 polygons is a perfectly reasonable number of polygons for a detailed shape like this to render outside of Houdini in Max or another piece of software.